would stand with me for the reading of the word. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, notice the name. It's not Abraham, it's Abram. Get thee out of the country and from, get thee out of thy country, out of your country, and from your kindred, from your family, and get away from your father's house unto a land that I will show thee. I want you to leave everything that you know. I want you to leave your family. I want you to leave your land. I want you to leave your kindred. I want you to leave everything that you know, your father. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curseth you. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. What a promise. All of you standing here right now are blessed because of Abraham. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had and gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Sichem, unto the plain of Morah, and the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and Hai on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. You may be seated. Now turn with me to Joshua. Chapter 1 and verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore rise and go over the Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you, nor forsake you. Can you repeat that with me? I will not fail you, nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand nor to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, And then thou shalt have good success. How many of you want good success? I'll take good success. If you don't want good success, give me your success. I want good success. Now, what scripture am I on? Nine. Thank you. God bless you very much. 
Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host, and command the people, saying, Prepare ye victuals, for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan, to go into the, and possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess. The scriptures that we read are talking about the same land. The same land that God promised to Abram. He said, I want you to leave everything that you know. And I want you to go into this land. And when you go into this land, everything is going to belong to your children. Everything that you, every place that you put your foot is going to belong to you and to your seed. And then Joshua, we all know the story where the children of Israel, whenever they, they were ran out of Egypt whenever they left Egypt and they they went into the wilderness over the Red Sea God did miracle after miracle after miracle I mean he, he destroyed the greatest army in the world for them he fed them by day you know he he, he just fed them in the in the morning manna on the ground everything was taken care of them even their clothes didn't get old their clothes grew with them their clothes grew with them they didn't wear out their shoes didn't wear out but whenever it came to going into their land of promise, they sent out the 12 spies and 10 came back and said, you know, what they really said is our God can't do it. I mean, they said, we, we can't do it. There's giants in land. We can't do it. But what they really meant is our, our God can't do it. We know that our God just destroyed the greatest army in the world, but our God can't do this. And so everyone that was over 30 years old perished over 40 years in the wilderness. And when Moses had finally passed away, God gave the order to Joshua, one of the two spies that came back with a good report and said, it's time to cross over. It's time for the seed of Abraham to receive their promise. And Joshua gave the orders. And God said to Joshua twice, Be courageous. Be of good courage. He repeated it to him. Don't be afraid. Be of good courage. All of this land belongs to you. The land of promise. The land of milk and honey. It all belongs to you. What do these two stories have in common? Of course, the land, same land. What these two stories have in common is that both of these men were obedient. Both of these men were able to have the courage to step out, to step out and away from what they knew. Joshua had grown up in the wilderness. Joshua had grown up with the manna on the ground. Joshua had grown up under the tutelage of Moses. Walking around in circles in the wilderness. And then as soon as Moses died, he said, Joshua, you got to have courage. How many of you are willing to have courage? Hey, this is... This is a, a no game for the weak-minded. If you're really going to walk into God's promises, you've got to have courage. You've got to have... And what is that courage a result of? Faith. If I've got more belief in this than I do in God, if I want... Uh, if I believe that that this is where my security comes from. I don't have any courage. I don't know where that came from. But anyway, God, I want you to understand something. Yes, the promise was fulfilled to Abraham and to Joshua. It was fulfilled to Abraham through Joshua. 
and to the, to the children of Israel that Joshua commanded. But God did not, and I want you, this is one of the big nuggets. This, this message has several huge nuggets I want you to take home. All right, write this down. This is a nugget. God did not do it for them. God said, I have a place prepared for you. I have a place that flows with milk and honey. It has vineyards you did not plant, houses you did not build. It flows with every provision that you need where you can live high on the hog. But you've got to go. I've prepared it, but you have to have the courage to get up and leave what you know. And you've got to step out of what you know. And you've got to step in to his promises. There are so many of us that live so far below below what God wants for us to have in this life. And I, I almost always preach about heaven. I almost always preach about salvation in the next life. But you know what? God wants to bless you right here, right now, in every possible way. Yes, will we have struggles? Hey, we didn't come here. You know, we we didn't come here for nothing. We came here to fight, right? We came here to fight. This This isn't about, but I believe that God wants to bless his children. He's the giver of all good gifts. And he wants to bless his children exceedingly and abundantly. He wants us to live in that land of promise. And so many of us do not. So many of us are still living in Ur of the Chaldees. So many of us have not left Tehran. So many of us have not dipped your toe in the River Jordan. You've not crossed over. You're still living on the other side of your promises. Yes, you may have, you may have repented of your sins you may have received the gift of the holy ghost you may have been baptized in jesus name but you're still not living you may be a chosen child of god just like the children of israel were in the desert but they never the ones that were 30 and over they never received the full promises of god i don't want i want all my promises i don't know about you but i want every promise in this book and yes every promise in this book is mine Hallelujah. You would have to be an idiot to say, no, God, just, just, I'm good. No. But how many of us are idiots? You know? If somebody showed up today and had a duffel bag full of money and said, hey, man, I just, just, you know, I... I just wanted to bless you today. And you said, well, no, thanks. I just, you know, I appreciate it, but no, no. You know, I I just believe in this poverty doctrine. You know, I believe that I'm just supposed to just eke on by. You know, I'm dependent on God to supply it all. Well, there's a duffel bag full of money that God just supplied for you. Take it and run. But before you step into your promise, before you step into all the promises of God, whatever it is that you're lacking, God wants to provide it. But there must be obedience first. God never makes provision without obedience first. And the obedience is to step out of where you are. If you are still, and those of you who are, who are still living in Ur, who are still living on the other side of Jordan, who have not crossed over yet, you know who you are. I challenge you today to have the courage. Don't be afraid. Be of good courage. And start to journey over the Jordan But you must do it with obedience. Obedience to his commandments. You know, the the scripture that we read the most, that we quote the most, we don't even read it, you know, we don't read it, we quote it, it's what? 
What is it? Acts 2.38. Acts 2.38 has a promise in it. Acts 2.38 and 39 has a promise in it. But it has two commands first. It says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Those are two, thing, two orders of obedience. Do these things, then the promise. Once you obey these two things, then you step into the promise. If you come to me with a contrite heart and you're repentant of your sins and you are baptized in my name, then the promise is unto you, to your children, to all that are far off. You've stepped into the land of promise. But promise always comes with obedience. Obedience always comes before blessing. The hand of God, you understand the hand of God has limitless provision. You understand that every, every chunk of gold that comes out of the earth, if you need a big chunk of gold, God will make more. It is absolutely infinite. His storehouse never runs low. He never runs low on healing. He never runs low on blessing. He never runs low on provision. He never runs low on anything that you need. So, well, where is it, God? Where's my blessing? I'm just, I'm just making it through this pilgrim land. Those old songs, you know. I'm just aching through. God, I'll be so glad when I die. You, you've heard some of those songs, and I love old hymn songs, but there are some of them that, oh my goodness, this is so horrible. Things are so bad. I'll be glad when I die so I can cross over to the promised land. Let me tell you something. You can start crossing over to the promised land, into God's promise, into his provision today. You don't have to wait till you die. Matter of fact, if you wait till you die, I, I don't know. I think we're supposed to cross over right here. Start living on a different plane of existence today, right here, right now. We should not wait till we die. The hand of God is so full of everything that you need. But it's through our disobedience and through our lack of faith that we take his hand, Brother Tim, and we close it. We close it with our own hand, with our own words, with our own thoughts, with our own disobedience, with our own fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. And when we fear, when we have anxiety about the future, when we don't believe that God is holding us in the hollow of his hand, we close that storehouse. He doesn't close it, we close it for him. Do you get that? A few of you do. If you'll all get this, you'll never be the same. Haggai chapter 2 verse 8 says... All the gold is mine. All the silver is mine. Everything. He says, in the second year of Darius the king, the sixth month, the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zeb uh, Zerubbabel, the son of, uh, yeah, uh, governor of Judah, and, and to Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, saying this. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say the time is not come, and the time that his Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord, saying to Haggai the prophet, saying, It is time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses in the house which lie waste. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider your ways. I want you, can you say that? I want to consider my ways. Ye have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you don't have enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You, you clothe ye, but there is none warm. You're all cold. And ye that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag full of holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider 
your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, it, uh, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts, because mine house that is in waste and ye run every man into his own house you all have houses but you have not built the house of god therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew and the earth is stayed from her fruit and i called for a drought upon the land god himself was saying hey i'm going to starve you guys out and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil and upon which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon the cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Yah, and Joshua, the son of uh, Jehoshadak, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God in the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent him, and the people did fear before the Lord. Then spake Haggai the Lord's messenger to the Lord's message and to the people, saying, I'm with you, saith the Lord. Can you say, I'm with you? And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Yah, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, and the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. In the four and twentieth day of the sixth month, in the second year of Darius the king, It goes on there to say that because you have turned, I'm going to bless you. I was starving you out before. I was causing the rain. Everything that you built, I blew on it and it blew away. Everything that because you were not obedient, because you did not have faith in me, you built your house first because you had had faith in those four walls. You had faith in your own in your own uh, uh, possession but you didn't have faith in me because you didn't build me a house first you should have built me a house first then i would bless your house but because you have done this i'm going to cause everything to dry up i'm going to cause everything to go away because you have not been obedient unto my word all the gold is mine all the silver is mine all the rainfall is mine all the fruit is mine everything on this earth and in the heavens above were created for him and by him the deal is he wants to share it with us he wants to share every good thing on this earth with you personally not with just the church not with just the kingdom but the lord god of heaven who made it all wants to share it with us oh no thanks god I just want to live my meager little life. I just want to go on. Wait till I die. Not me. I'm ready to step out. I'm ready to step out into a closer walk with Jesus. And I'm ready to step into my promises. Amen. How many of you raise your hand if you're ready to step out of Ur? If you're ready to step out into the waters of Jordan? And claim your promise. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel chapter 15 says that obedience is better than sacrifice. But my goodness, God does love sacrifice. Obedience is mandatory. You don't obey God. Hey, you're not going to heaven even. But sacrifice with the cheerful heart. God loves. God loves. You know, God has prepared for, I'm not going to say this church, but this church. God has prepared for you miracles. Miracles. How many of you have experienced a miracle in your life? Some of you are about to receive a miracle in your life after this message. God's been doing miracles for a long time. He's never ran out. 
And he's got more miracles today than he's ever had. He's been doing miracles since the dawn of man and even before we ever walked upon this earth. But he has no fewer miracles than he has ever had. He is able to meet whatever need that you have. He's got provision beyond what you can ask or think. He has abundance for you and blessings for you. As long as you're willing to claim it. As long as you're willing to step out. As long as you're willing to be obedient. How many of you had a lottery ticket today? And please don't go buy a lottery ticket. That's a tax on the stupid. Oh, come on, this is a tough crowd. That was pretty rich. But if you picked up a lottery ticket on the way into church today, and I actually have picked up lottery tickets out of the parking lot. Uh, so if you do win pay your tithe okay (laughs) but if you were just walking into church this morning and you picked up a lottery ticket and you just won a million dollars how many of you would just say well you know so what I don't need it. I really don't need it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to toss this in the trash. Not a single one of you would, me neither. If I just found a lottery ticket on the ground and it, I was a winner, I'd go get my money. God wants to give us good gifts, but there's so many of us that whenever there's endless provision, there's endless blessings for us, because we have a lack of faith, we don't believe that God can do it. We, many of us live just like the children of Israel that died in the wilderness because we think this problem is too big. My need is too much. God can't meet it. God can't do it. And you know what? You're exactly right. If you believe that your problem is too big for God, you're right. Because you have just handcuffed him. You've just closed his hand of blessing. Our minds are very, very powerful things. So, I want to be, here is my New Year's resolution. I want to be closer to God, Brother Steve, than I have ever been. I want to get closer to God than I've ever been. And I want everything, I want access to everything in that storehouse that he has for me and for this church. I want spiritual gifts. I want to be blessed physically. I want my family blessed I want to see this church so full, Coach, that we got to build a building by next year. How many of you believe that that will happen? I'm stepping out. I'm stepping out, and I'm stepping into that. Hallelujah. The first message that was ever preached behind this pulpit right here in this room is Paul Daugherty. He got up and spoke for just a minute, and first thing he said was, you're going to need a bigger church. I believe that that's true. We're going to need a bigger church in very soon. I'm stepping into that promise. I want to be blessed. You can think bad of me if you want. Think bad of me if you want. That's okay with me. But I want to be blessed financially, exceedingly and abundantly, more than I can ask or think, more than I expect in 2022. And if you don't, that's okay too. But I do. And I'm stepping into that promise. I'm believing in that promise. Hey, I, you know what? If you, if you don't uh, give with a cheerful heart in your tithing and in your offering, don't expect that. Because you have not been obedient. And you're walking around with a bucket full of holes. But if you've been obedient in your giving, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. You have not. Because you've not asked. 
Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. But you will never walk in the perfect will of God without first renewing your mind. I was... uh, As we were in northwest Arkansas, me and my uh, wife snuck off up to Branson to go to this museum. And uh, on the way, we stopped at a gas station. And uh, I walked in. We picked up what we were picking up. I think we got some gas. And I walked walked in to pay for what I had. And I just said the clerk was just, you know, just not really paying attention to me she's just kind of looking down so I said well how are you today and she's like oh my goodness if this world gets any worse I don't know what I'm going to do what in the world are my grandbabies going to do I'm so worried my goodness you know I, I, what in the world's going to happen to this world I just don't know and I was thinking my goodness I need a shower I was like, I, I told her, and Tam was standing there. I said, well, it's, you know what? It's up to us to make this world a better place for everybody, including our grandchildren, to live in. Amen? She needed a renewing of her mind because she speaks into existence exactly what she's going to receive. And let me tell you something. You speak into existence exactly what you're going to receive. If you speak that I'm just cursed and, you know, nothing good's ever going to happen to me, you are exactly right. I texted someone yesterday, Happy New Year. I'm looking for blessings like never before in the New Year. And I was encouraging and they sent back, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. But you know what? I do know what's going to happen. Not because I'm a prophet, not because I'm a soothsayer, not because I know the future, but I do know what my God promised me, and I know what he's going to do before he does it. Hallelujah. The world and everything in it was spoken into existence, and we humans are supposed to be made in the image of God. We, we, were, we are supposed to talk like God. We're supposed to create things like God. And oh yes, we do. Every one of us creates our own environment. Whenever you wake up in the morning, I'll tell you what, and my wife will tell you, I've been driving her crazy about 2022. I have been so wired up about 2022. I usually get excited this time of year, but I have never been so excited the last three or four days. I've never been so excited in my life. Has everything been going right? No, no. As a matter of fact, I've had more just dirt balls coming at me than than usual. But you know, more arrows, more darts of the devil coming at me than usual in the last couple of weeks. But hey, it's fine because I know what God's promises are to me. I know that if I step out beyond where I am and step in deeper in a closer walk with him, give him more praise. Hallelujah. If I turn over to him in obedience, those secret parts of my heart that I've not yet revealed to him, that I've not yet allowed him to touch. If you have something in your life that you've not allowed him to touch, give it to him. When you give it to him, what's he going to do? It's like the, the young man with the fishes and the loaves. Did he have enough? Did he have enough to feed the multitude with just a few fishes and a little bit of bread? He may not even have had enough for his own lunch. But he gave it to God and God does what God does. 
God is not a God of division. He's not a God of subtraction. Unless you're disobedient. I'll tell you what. I think if that young man had not given that lunch to Jesus, he'd have probably gotten sick on it. Probably given him food poisoning. Had diarrhea for a couple days. But because he was obedient, not only did he eat, but all the multitude ate. And there were 12 huge body-sized baskets left over. Because God is not a God of division. He's not a God of subtraction. He is a God of multiplication. Amen? And if you want him to multiply something in your life, if you want him to bless something in your life, give it to him. You will never, never, never be sorry that you did. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Everything that we do is spoken into existence. Where we live, the ground that you're standing on was spoken into existence. And God has given us the ability to speak things into existence. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 34 says that, O generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the next time that something, I want you to pay attention to your mouth because what comes out your mouth is in your heart. And what's in your heart is in your head. So pay attention to your mouth. And if you, if you wake up in the morning, there's nothing but grumbling and complaining or negativity or self-defeatism that I'm already defeated before I ever go to work. I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty of that. You just spoke into existence what was in your mind and in your heart. We must renew our mind. But all, also what we say Who's the first person to hear what you say? You are. What was the first thing that God created with his words? He said, let there be light. And there was light. And so many times I speak darkness. And in my, out of my mouth comes darkness Into my ear goes darkness, into my mind goes darkness, and into my heart goes darkness, and then it multiplies and comes back out of my mouth. And every time I speak it, that darkness gets darker and darker and darker. But you know, we can be like God, we can speak light. And when you speak light, there is light. When you speak darkness, There is darkness. And whenever there is light in your life, all the darkness must flee. Please stand with me. We've got a choice. You can either magnify, the scripture says that we should magnify the Lord. You have an opportunity to magnify the Lord and all of His works and all of His promises in your life. Or you have an opportunity to magnify the darkness. It's a creative choice. What do you choose to do? You know, Crystal, with your talent, you could be playing in any honky-tonk in the state. Don't take up a, a, another day job. But you choose to use your talents to magnify the light. Brother Ashton, you're a young man, but you're full of talent. You're full of potential. And you know what? You could go out into the, into the world and, and make millions of dollars, but you choose to spend your time here at night and in the daytime giving your talents to magnify the light. And you will never be sorry. I'm ready to step out of the shadows and into his marvelous light. 
If your marriage is on the rocks, don't step out apart. Step out together. If your finances are on the skids, be obedient and cheerful giving. Step out, ask and receive. If your health is fading, number one, start, stop doing whatever it is that's killing you. Stop eating what you're eating, drinking what you're drinking, smoking what you're smoking, dipping what you're dipping. Be obedient because this is the temple of the Lord. And the Lord has a miracle for you, doesn't he, Sister Brenda? If you're bogged down in sin, repent. Turn around. Go another way. If you're depressed, if you have an oppressed spirit, if you have impoverished thoughts, there's, there's more than one way of being poor. The poorest people I know are very rich financially. If you have impoverished, I know people that have everything you can think of that call me all the time that are so depressed. You know, you can't change anything. You can't change anyone but you. With the Holy Ghost at work in your life, you can change you. And when you change you, this is another big nugget. This is a nugget I want you to take home with you. This nugget here is bigger than you can carry. Whenever you are renewed in your mind, whenever you allow the Holy Spirit to renew your mind, and you change you, everything around you changes. When the light is shined into a dark place, everything changes. And then those promises start to come to you one by one by one. How many of you believe what I've said in this house today? Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 and I'm I'm in I'm closing today. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing unto ca into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So every time that the devil tells you or your own flesh tells you something's negative or God is not enough, God, my problem is too big, my debt is too big, my issues are too big for my God, you take that thought captive. Don't put the handcuffs on Jesus. Put the handcuffs on your mind. Put the handcuffs on those thoughts. It says, you take every thought captive because I will promise you one thing. Those of you who are oppressed and depressed and stressed out and maxed out, listen to me right now. And I know a lot of you are under the sound of my voice, both here and online. If you just can't take it anymore, take those thoughts captive if you do not they have already taken you captive either your mind and your thoughts will be your captive or you will be its and with Jesus every thought with Christ every thought can be taken captive so negativity defeatism pessimism Depression, impoverished thoughts. You know, that's our default setting. We're born like that. We're born children of Adam. 
We were born negative. Negative's easy. You, you ever notice you don't have to try to be negative? It's your default setting. It's what you came out of the factory with. Just to be pessimistic, negative. But it's the Holy Ghost that renews our mind. It's the Holy Ghost that reboots our system into being positive and being expectant of his blessings, of having faith in his provision. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And there is victory in that way. There's victory over every, every disease, every problem, every addiction, every perversion, over every principality and every power. In that way, he also said that, Scripture says that there is, he is light, and in in him there is no darkness. There's no darkness whatsoever, nor even a shadow of turning. So if you know that he's the way, this is a new day. Let's step out, and I like what you said, Steve. A lot of times good gets in the way of great. And in this new year, I'm ready to step out of, hey, I've got it good, no complaints. But when great is available, who wants good? I want what's great in my life. I want the promises of God that are, His promises are yea and amen. Can you say it with me? Yay and amen. That means yes. Can you say it with me? Yes. 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 His promises are yes. And so be it. Hallelujah. The last word in the last book of the Bible says amen. Or so be it. And if you will only do what Abraham and Joshua did, And step out and step in. You'll never be sorry that you did. One more scripture and I'm done. Joshua chapter 3, verse 13. And it shall come to pass as soon as the souls of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that are down from above, and they shall stand in a heap. And it came to pass. You believe that? That again, after walking around for 40 years in the desert, that whenever those priests stood, they just got their, the soles of their feet in the water, that that water stood on end. And they passed over to that land of milk and honey, on dry ground. Would you step out? Those of you who need a a healing of your body today, step out. Those of you who need a healing of your mind, who need a renewing of your mind, step out. Your lottery ticket has been punched by Jesus. You just won. Step out. If there is a problem in your life that you believe that there's nothing that can overcome it. Well, I know I know someone who can overcome every problem. Are you preaching pastor, are you preaching to us a a, a message of, of uh, prosperity? Are you a prosperity preacher? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm a prosperity preacher. You bet I'm a prosperity preacher because Jesus' promises are yea and amen. I'm also an obedience preacher. And in obedience, it says, if, if there are any sick among you, whether you're sick here, here, or in your body, 
If there's any sick among you, come before the elders of the church. Have them anoint you with oil and lay hands upon you. And the prayer of faith, the prayer of faith, we speak it. He said the prayer of faith will save the sick. When you speak that prayer of faith, whenever you send that prayer of faith, it has creative power. It will save the sick. Hallelujah. Those of you who are sick among us, please come. Let's receive His promise today. Hallelujah.
something has to break You'll tear down every lie Make the wrong things right If you have your way Something has to break I feel it in His room Holy Spirit
sing, you are dismissed. You're dismissed if you're willing. 